Hey everybody, Andy Ryder here with Project Lab. Today's video is a collaboration with Peter Tozinski. Piotr Tozinski. Hey, my name is Piotr Tozinski. You can call me Peter. Cut to the point. Piotr Tozinski. Piotr Tozinski. Or Peter from the Cut to the Point YouTube channel. Over on Cut to the Point, Peter talks about both the artistic and the technical sides of digital video editing. This isn't any random tutorial channel. His videos are legitimately entertaining. So I highly recommend checking him out. Over on his channel, Peter and I collaborated on a video of tips for DIY maker video editors. It features some of the things I've learned over the years of making videos, both in journalism and on project. Project Lab. For my end of the deal, we're going to make a raised letter sign of Peter's logo. I've made signs before on this channel, but this time we have a totally new challenge. I've got to ship this sign to Poland. So I need to make this sign in a way that gets it across the ocean as safely and cheaply as possible. That's why for this sign, I'm going to try printing the letters off on my 3D printer. This thing prints using plastic that is really light anyway, but you can change settings to make your prints essentially hollow, which hopefully will save some weight for shipping. I got this thing back in October and I've used it for a lot of random stuff since then, but I've never needed to produce anything that actually looks good. So figuring out how to paint and finish these letters will be another challenge. To save on shipping costs, I'm only gonna focus on the letters. Once they're done, I'm gonna throw them in a box and ship them to Poland. So that'll be another challenge, figuring out how to work together on a project 4,500 miles away. So let's give it a try. Peter already sent me a digital version of his logo, so I'll start by converting that into something my 3D printer can read. I'm not quite sure what the letter thickness should be, but 20 millimeters seems good. And now I can save the file on a memory card and load that onto the 3D printer and then print. Curious. The head has stopped and it's still touching the plastic. Yeah, it's supposed to be 20 millimeters and it's at 15. So I don't know why it stopped so early, but that's concerning to have the nozzle, heated nozzle, just sitting there on plastic for who knows how long. So let's try this again. And again, it stops. This is a really good reason why you shouldn't be leaving a 3D printer unattended because I didn't know this could happen. But evidently, my memory card was bad. Switching it out with the nicer one fixed the problem, but it's still kind of scary that this is even possible. A silver lining to this is that my original 20 millimeter letters might have been a bit too thick and that first failed batch stopped at 15 millimeters, which seems like a better depth. So I'll have to reprint the ones I already did, but at least I discovered it before printing all. With the letters printed, I can cut off the rough parts. And then I'll hot glue them to a board to make it easier to spray paint them. The stuff I'm using now is auto body filler primer. It's basically like a super thick coat of paint, so it'll help fill in the print lines and any small glitches in the plastic. Now with that dry, I'll use plain old drywall spackle to fill in the bigger gaps. Now I'll sand the letters to smooth them out. And I'll clean off any dust with water and a toothbrush. Now that they're dry, I'll add some hooks on the back to make it easier to hold the letters while I paint them. Normally I'd use spray paint to paint the letters, but it's a little cold in the garage right now. So instead I'm gonna try brushing on acrylic paint for everything. First I need to find the right colors. I'm sure I could mix colors to get the right ones I'm looking for, but I don't really want to have to figure out how to do that right now. And these bottles are only like a buck 50 each, so it doesn't cost that much to experiment here. Now that I have that figured out, I'll make a wet palette. A guy on YouTube named Miniac says this will help keep the paint from drying out. So I'll give it a try. And now I can start painting. Ooh, 
One of these bar pieces actually has multiple colors on it, so I'll use painter's tape to cover up the areas I don't want to paint. And then I'll pull that off when the paint's dry and I'm ready to move on to the next color. This yellow is not going on well. This paint is so thin. So I guess I'll try airbrushing it instead. I've never airbrushed before and I didn't really want to learn how to do it on this project, but I'm not sure what else to try at this point. All right, this isn't working either. So I asked my dad about this. He knows a thing or two about pigment because he works at a printing plant. You have to get your old man to make you one of these. <laughs> be a lot of holes to drill. He mentioned that one problem might be my base color. I tested the paint out on white paper, but my letters are gray and red, so that background color is bleeding through this super light color. So let's try a yellow base coat instead. Well, it's a little over a month later and I'm still working on this. I've been stuck in a gumption trap because if you look real close at the yellow letters, you can see brush strokes. And while I think that that kind of look can work for something like the Deb's Kitchen sign, which had more of a vintage feel to it, it doesn't really work with the cut to the point sign because the design is so clean and intentional that brush strokes are distracting here, especially with this bright yellow. It's kind of like the last 5% of quality here. I mean, technically this could be done right now, but this is something that Peter has actually talked about in his video on his intro. He breaks down how he put this thing together and how it looked good, but then when he added these extra fancy effects to the end, it made it look great. And I think that's the exact same thing here. Essentially, I need to use some sort of spray on this. And I've been dragging my feet because the airbrushing went so bad last time. But I'm gonna do some things differently this time, so hopefully it goes better. So this time, let's try a white base coat. First coats dry, they look pretty good, but I had some drips in some spots and the white paint revealed some textures in other spots. So I'll sand and do another coat. It's a few hours later, these have dried again and we've got problems. Overall, these look better, but there's still some ridges. I think I need to redo that auto body filler. It's tough to see, but even on the surface here, there's some stuff that you can feel. I think that's gonna be a problem. I think we have to actually take this all the way down, get all that paint off. So we'll just scrape it off with a utility knife. That Band-Aid is unrelated to the way I'm scraping here. This is less dangerous than it looks. Should be good enough to try to paint again at this point. I'm sick of running up and down the stairs to spray paint in the garage. I've got at least four to seven coats left to do. I'm gonna try to rig up a DIY spray booth. Now to try it out. And it works. The white primer's dry, so now I'll try a new spray can with yellow. And I think we're good to go. So now we just have one final clear coat. And of course that clear coat ate through the light gray paint, so now I have to redo that. Wow, 
Why am I doing the f I want this to dry. And finally the painting's all finished. So next I need to print out a full size drawing of the sign. Peter will be able to use this under his plexiglass sheet to figure out where to mount his letters. You can see here on my printout that the letters are somehow much smaller than I originally intended. I don't know how this happened. I'm just gonna scale down the size for how the characters turned out because who knows how long it would take to redo all this. I'm just gonna measure the yellow square, adjust it on the drawing, to be that same size. This time I added a bunch of reference lines across the whole drawing and that gives me a lot more marks to help line everything up exactly. And I can print it off again. So there's gonna be two ways to display this sign. One is gonna use these 3D printed standoffs. Peter someday will be able to use the marks in the corners of the drawing to show where to drill holes in the plexiglass. I'll throw a half inch drill bit into the package for this purpose. And then he can use that same drawing to mark where to put those holes for the standoffs in the wall as well. And then he can mount the sign on those standoffs. But Peter isn't planning on hanging the sign up on a wall for now, so I'll also make him a stand out of some wood to display the sign on something like a desk. With that, I guess my work here is done. Now I just have to pack it up. I feel bad about using so many plastic bags here, but I really don't want these letters to get screwed up on the way to Poland. I'll do some research on more sustainable shipping methods for the next time I have to ship anything like this. But this is the best I can do for now. This is weird. I've spent so much time on this and now I'm just shipping it off without even seeing it actually complete. That's just the way it has to be. This totally makes sense, but it feels weird. There's a little bit of worry, like what if it gets destroyed or what if I forgot something and Peter can't get it together? Still, I'm really happy to be at this point. I'm gonna be even happier when I can see it complete over in Poland. So let's hope this stuff makes it there okay. Time to ship it. I need to ship this to Poland. Okay. It's not a huge value item, is it? Um, it's something I made, so in theory it's not like $5. Okay. $24 is just first class that has no insurance. 57 is priority, and that includes insurance of up to $200. let us just do the 24 Okay. I'll have to have you do a customs form really quick, okay. which is number six over there. I think I got it all. Just missed a signature and date on that box there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Take Have a good care now. You, you too. And now we wait. Luckily, I didn't need that insurance. The package made it to Poland just fine. <laughs> cool. I need the 3D printer. Wow. And now the actual letters. Yellow letters are just the best. It's hard to believe that it's 3D printed. 100% silicon. This is pretty pricey material, but I could actually specify the size, so no cutting needed. And now it's gluing down the letters. This is pretty tricky because I do want them to stick to the surface, but on the other hand, I don't want extra glue to squeeze out from behind the letters. So it took some time, but actually I enjoyed it a lot. There is some stuff here at the back of some of these figures and that prevents them from laying down on the surface nicely. So I will just send it a little bit. Assembly process is done. So now I will wait like a day to let the glue stick with the letters and then tomorrow I will record some beauty shots. So without further ado, let's see it!
Let me tell you, I'm really happy with the results, especially with the yellow letters. My goodness, I think these are like higher level. Nice work, Andy. Thanks, Peter, you too. So time to review. The 3D printing worked well. Hand cutting is still viable, but the extra precision you get from digital fabrication is pretty amazing. You really gotta commit to getting those letters as smooth as possible at the beginning, though. Keep working on them until you can't see those layer lines at all. The shipping wasn't really a big deal. I would call 24 bucks pretty cheap to send a package across the ocean in one piece. And working with Peter on this was really fun. He did a great job on the sign. The care he put into sanding the letters, for example, surprised me. And he was smart to pick a transparent background because it made the letter placement so much easier. I would highly recommend that to anyone making their first sign. In the end, I'm glad we did this. It would have been easy to say, oh, Poland and Wisconsin are too far away. We'll never be able to make this work. But it was totally doable. So if you're thinking about working with another artist, I wouldn't worry about where they live. Unless you're trying to ship a semi or something, that might be a different story. So be sure to go check out Peter's channel and let him know that I told you to stop by. If you want to learn more about sign making, I'll include a playlist to some of my other work on the subject. And if you have any thoughts or questions, you can leave them in the comments on YouTube. I try to respond to everybody who stops by. Thanks for watching.